Thank you. I now yield to myself. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Ranking <laughs> Member Neal, and thank you, Secretary Becerra, for being here today. One of my biggest concerns about the United States health care is the current workforce shortage that we're all facing around the country. This shortage is particularly concerning in rural communities where hospitals are closing at higher rates than anywhere else in the country. While inflation caused by the Biden administration's out of control spending is partly to blame for hospitals struggling, a dwindling workforce is often also cited as one of the biggest problems for rural hospitals. One policy which contributed to this shrinking healthcare workforce was a vaccine mandate for the healthcare workers, which was put in place by the Biden administration. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services gave hospitals an ultimatum, force your entire staff to get vaccinated or no Medicaid services, where they will no longer participate in Medicare or Medicaid programs. In rural America, where a disproportionate share of patients are enrolled in Medicare and Medicaid, this gave hospitals an impossible choice. Your agency forced healthcare workers that did not want to get a vaccine out of the workforce. <coughs> Secretary Becerra, on September 18th of last year, President Biden declared that the pandemic was over. The administration has also announced they plan to end the public health emergency on May 11th of this year, can you please explain to me why this administration intends to keep the CMS vaccine mandate in effect until November of 24, especially when we know this policy is contributing to the workforce shortage? Congresswoman, let me see if I can address your question straight on. Um, COVID's still with us. It is not where, what it was three years ago. Uh, but today, two to 300 Americans will likely die from COVID. Uh, it is still something we have to take into account and protect against. It is worse, and you will remember those days when you couldn't even walk into a hospital to visit your relative who was sick with COVID because you could become infected as well. We have to make sure we're protecting each other. Well, and, that's cer and certainly healthcare workers have to be protected against COVID, and we have to make sure we're protected against healthcare workers who are treating health COVID infected patients, and it would be irreconcilable to say that a healthcare worker who is around COVID should not be vaccinated to make sure that he or she is not inadvertently passing COVID on to people who are not yet infected. Well, you've just repeated that, basically. I'd like to now turn to something that will help bolster our healthcare workforce. In 2020, Congress took the historic step of adding 1,000 new graduate medical education slots to train additional physicians for the first time ever. Multiple hospitals in my district utilized the GME program, and I was so encouraged when Congress put guardrails in to ensure that the slots were distributed to rural areas that face acute provider shortages. Can you imagine my dismay when I saw recently that nearly 20% of the GME slots distributed around went to New York State alone. Can you commit to the committee that the next round of distribution will better prioritize rural areas? Absolutely, Congressman. We will work with you because I have also fretted over the When I was a member of Congress, I raised this issue of GME. And one of the issues, and perhaps for those of you who are in rural parts of the country, it is nearly impossible to get any of these GME slots because Rarely do you find many of the medical schools located in rural America. And so we have to figure out a way to get some of these training slots because oftentimes where you train is where you end up living and practicing. And so we need to make sure we're directing some of these uh, future doctors to communities like rural America where there is a shortage of them. We have 